start the recording. So today I'm just going to give a small recap on the session related to Java. So yesterday I told you about how a program executes. Okay, and then how a Java program executes, then we'll see about the variables and then data types here. Okay, so how normally a program executes means so I'm just giving a small recap as yesterday, a quick recap I'll just give you. Then again, we'll come back to the um, usage of actually variables and then data that you will see. So how it executes. So first we used to write the program in a file. Then we'll save it actually that file with some extension .java or .rb or any extension related to the programming language. Okay, the language, the program which we have write, written by us will be called as a high level language. Okay, so the program which we have written that will be called as a high level language. Each and every line will be called as a statements here. Those high level language can be understandable by the human, but it cannot be understandable by the system or a server. So we need to convert into a system understandable language that is called as a machine level language which is zeros and ones because system knows only zeros and one and then it understands based on that only the action will be performed so the translation is of two types one is compiler another one is interpreter what is this compiler and what is this interpreter means both the system will help you to convert the high level language to machine level language difference between this is if i have thousand lines of code in my system or sorry in my notepad or in a file entire thousand lines of code will be converted in a single shot then only my execution will start that is what a compiler will do Total thousand lines of code will be converted, then only execution will start. So during the conversion, if there is any syntax errors or something, that will be identified and then it will be reported by the compiler. So once we clear all the syntax errors, then only you can start the execution. Till then you cannot start your execution. That is one more important thing here. Okay. So in compiler level, so it will convert everything during the conversion if it identifies any issues okay it will first ask us to come uh, ask us to clear all the issues then only we can start working on it okay then only the execution will be started clear this then after that interpreter what it will do means okay so interpreter level so interpreter level from my side, each and every line will be converted, then it will be executed. Thousand lines of code is there, means first line will be converted, check whether any syntax error is there, then it will be executed. Then second line will be converted, then it will be executed. Then third line, execute. Fourth line, converts and executes. Like that each and every line will be converted and be executed. So here the execution time is faster. Okay, here the execution time is faster because only one line is converted and then the execution starts. But in compiler level, execution time is slower. But the advantage is what means when I'm trying to compile all the errors, I will be identified during my compilation time itself. I don't want to execute my program that point of time. Okay, I don't want to execute the program so that's the advantage when you start to execute it will execute in a single flow but interpreter level when i execute that point of time only i will come to know whether there is an error or not so if i have if i find a thousand lines of code in the 250th line if i find an error 250 lines will be executed then only for me it will be uh, giving me the information for the there is an error in the program. Please clear it. It stops there. Now I need to clear all the uh, uh, the errors at the 250th line. Then again I need to run. Then again actually what compile? Then sorry, it will check for the uh, that is it will convert. Then execute. Convert. Execute. Convert. 
so like that still it goes again there is a problem in the 300 the line again stops the program there again i need to clear then in the 500th line again there is an error like that whenever i come to that step then only i will know there is a error in the program syntax error is there or not that's the difficulty with the interpreter clear any questions guys so far anyone ask any questions no good so far so this was already covered yesterday yeah it's already covered i'm just giving a recap okay. alone this is what the so first session topic. started yesterday okay this is the first topic correct, correct. Okay. this is the first topic okay okay guys okay. so how a java program will be executed a java program how it will be means okay so first we write this java program in a file then we save it with an extension called dot java okay so always each and every uh, language will be saving its information with dot java extension okay so uh, each and every line which is written is called as java statement now this java first it will be given for the compiler okay in java if you see there are two things in this compiler and interpreter before in olden days you will have only one type of translation alone might be compiler or translation type or might be interpreter type java they combine both then they give both compiler plus interpreter both the options they give for us okay so here for me, first the compiler, what it will do with? For me, it will take the Java file, check whether there is any syntax error. Okay? It checks whether any syntax error is present or not. Then after that, if there is any syntax errors, then what will happen? It will stop the uh, program there and gives me all the errors in the entire program list. That's what it will do. If entirely everything is clear, then after that, from my side, the compiler will con com uh, convert everything. Then after that, it creates me a dot class file here. Okay, so this file is dot Java file, and this is dot class file here. So the class file is what means that's the bytecode. Okay, that is zeros and ones. Okay, so first level of conversion is being done here. The compiler it will do translate here and then do the first level of conversion so then when the conversion is done then again that bytecode uh, the dot class file is there that will be again given to jvm for execution because i told you compiler will be first converting it then only it will be given for execution so jvm is the one which will help me to execute the code okay so compiler First, it will be converting the first level of conversion. Then it will create the dot class file. The dot class file will be given to the JVM for execution. JVM is the only person who can understand the class file. That is, who can read the class file. Apart from that, no one will understand the class file here. Clear? So what is the advantage of using the dot class file and then why they come up with the solution means in uh, for example, I have developed one software uh, which is actually for example, I'll take it as actually a, uh, a Gmail. Okay, like the a Gmail and uh, a mailing system I have been introduced. So now what will happen? It took more than three to four years for me to develop the software. Okay, so with a lot of research over there, I have done that software over there. Totally took around more than actually what from my side, four years of time with around 100 developers or something. Now, the client, now I'm trying to sell the product. So now the customer will be asking me, can I verify the product and then check whether it's how it is working or not. So now what will happen, right now the client will get the information of the code we have to send the entire code to the client then only you can execute the program okay so that's the biggest risk over here 
before uh, what they will do means they will use to take the code from the system and then they will duplicate the same system again okay so for that if you see that will not take much time for them it's so faster okay they entirely they duplicate the system clear any questions for so far any questions guys for so far anyone has any questions so the dot okay okay so now the dot class file uh, so okay they will duplicate the system so it will be a big risk for me so that's why right now java they came up into this solution so the code files will be there in the dot java file yeah? the class files will be there in the actually what which will be opened only by the jvm apart from that no one can open the system so what they did right now means when the customer is going to ask me i just want to see the demo of the system they will send only the class file alone they will not send the dot java file so for me as a software company my code is secure right now my code is secure and then another one actually what the client also he want to verify the application is working fine or not he don't want the code of the system he want to check whether application is perfectly working or not according to his need so now for him the dot class file is there it's more than enough for him to execute the application okay so that's how java is being introduced and then came into the industry clear anyone has any questions so far so jvm is java virtual machine then we have jre which is called as java runtime environment okay jvm is java virtual machine jre is java runtime environment any software you take they will have their own environment to execute the code same thing in skype also it will have its own environment based on that environment only it will verify it clear so jr is what means java runtime environment where your codes will be helpful for us to execute the java information okay jdk is another one jdk is what means it's like a development kit okay so the jdk if you see they will have the java component plus jvm plus jre and then some extra stuffs over here okay so java component plus jvm plus jre so <coughs> so what's the advantage of the jdk means from my side if i want to integrate my code to the third party software for example if you come to selenium i need to work on with the window based application so if i want to work on with window based application i need the auto it tool so like that when i want to work on with actually a third party software and maven like those stars i need some of my jdk properties so for that only we are uh, asking you that that's why actually what we have take, taken the jdk for our selenium it's needed clear okay. if you see interpreter level we have basic is the oldest language compiler c c c plus plus okay these both are compiler type programs over there so now this is about the execution part now we'll install the software so i'm going to send this software to you i'll be sending a document to you but just one <laughs> Just 
this in case we didn't do it. I'll just take it just a bit. Four files and talks. So now I want to install Java and then JDK in this stuff. So we have seen we have seen how to uh, get the Java executed in the system. Okay, so we've seen how the execution happens here. Now we are going to install Java, JDK, and then Eclipse. So you see, everything is actually in charge only for you guys. So you guys don't need to worry anything from your side. So first we'll see. Whether Java is installed in my system or not. Okay. So, if Java is to be installed or not, so first open your command prompt cmd. Okay, just type cmd. Otherwise, if you don't have, uh, you can also press Windows button, press R, then type cmd. Click on enter. Now you can see Java space iPhone version. Just give this thing Java space iPhone version that will give you the version of it 1.8. Okay, Java space iPhone version being here that gives you the version 1.8. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so now it's giving me the version of it. So, right now, from my side, if I don't have Java installed in the system, I'll be getting Java is not recognized as an internal or external command. Okay, so if I get like this, you need to install Java. So for that, just type here Java download. Download free Java software. Go here, the first website. You can see free Java download. Just when you click on it, You'll be getting agree and start free download. When you click on it, you'll be getting an exe file. Once it's been installed, just click on it, double click on it, and click on next, next, next. Then the Java will be installed. Okay, no confusions on that. Just click on next, 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 and then Java will be installed. That is how you can install the Java. Okay, next step from our side, we need to install the JDK. So now, if I want to install the JDK, so what can we do? JDK download, I'll just skip. Go to the first link, click on it. Open your google.co.in, from there you just search for this JDK download, other websites will not give you as a first link, Google search only will give you as a first link here. Okay, then click on JDK, click on it. Then after that, click on the accept license agreement, click on it. Then here Windows x86 is there, Windows x64 is there. Okay, these are the two things. X86 means it's 32-bit machine. 64 means it's a 64-bit machine. How to confirm your version means click on the start. Go to your My Computer. Right-click Properties. Here you can see your version. Minus 64-bit machine. In case if it's a 32-bit, you can see the 32-bit machine over here. 
sometimes you will be getting only this window alone if you are using a old system so only if you get this window if you are not getting actually what this window so that means us is a 32 bit machine here okay so mine right now it's a 64 bit machine so i am going to download this one so when you download it you will be again getting an exe file just double click on the exe file click on next 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 without doing any changes here so now for us we have installed the java and then the jdk in the system okay so simple direct straightforward installation only next 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 it will be installed then next from my side so i told you about the java jdk installation next from my side once the jdk has been installed we need to set the path variable what is the path variable means so here so here from my side i'll go to the jdk section where it's been downloaded so i'll go to the c drive usually where my jdk will be there so here go to the program files go to java then after that here go to jdk okay then after that here go to the bin folder so program files java jdk and finally go to the bin folder section okay so this one you need to copy the path of it okay just get the path of it over here okay so copy the path right click copy so you copied the path of it then after that just go to your my computer right click properties advanced system settings advanced tab environment variables then here you search for path variable then click on edit then go to the end of the file semicolon and then paste it that's it clear then you have to click on okay and okay and okay so i already have done so that's why i'm just clicking on cancel otherwise we used to click on okay and okay and okay okay so anyone has any questions so right now once this has been done you have to close the existing command prompt then after that here you again type java space hyphen Version. that gives you the version so the main thing is here the java and then jdk both the things are being installed over here there will not be anything separate that information gives you that this is jdk enabled or something like that okay so the same information what are the things i have explained to you same advanced tab in run variables then it will go for the path variable enter the details of it okay so then go for the path and then give the details and finally check the version of it java space second version clear this is about to install java so now i want some person to explain me the information what i told so i'll just ask with you guys so now i'll ask um virith can you tell me as how to get the java is installed in my system or not i need to verify whether java is installed in my system or not what can i do so we need to open the command prompt and uh, type the command right correct so now, to open version uh, to open the command prompt what can i do we can uh, go to search and put the cmd correct go to start type cmd and then you can open that the another way to open also windows r button then type cmd okay yes then now then we need to type uh, java space hyphen person 
awesome that's it java space iphone version right now it's giving 1.8 in case if we don't have then we need to install first uh, java so, so we need to type in uh, any browser like uh, I that is i need to download right now actually what java it has been done now next actually what from my side i need to uh, uh, it's given me for example right now it's not a recognized command okay okay then now we I, to, then we uh, need to download java and then uh, jdk download correct so for that type java download yes here then we need to choose the first link like free java software yes we need to download this uh, software yes then uh, free start free java download then then we need to install correct so once we install double click next 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 and then finally it will be continued and once the successful uh, installation is done for java yes then we need to I mean, not here exactly. You can to, close the existing browser, open newly. Yeah. Then type. We can again. We can again type uh, that CMD again, and then for those. I know. Now I need to install JDK. I install Java in the system. I need to install JDK. Yeah, Java is installed, then we need to install the JDK. For that, also we need to go to browser and type JDK space download. Oh, sorry, guys. I was in mute. It's my mistake. Sorry, sorry. I was in mute. Got it. Oh, cool. Yeah, Lakshmi Narayana. I'll just put you. So I have downloaded the Java. Now I need to download the JDK. Can you tell me like, how I can do that? Hello, Lakshmi Narayana. You are there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here already. Yes. What I need to yeah. give the keyword? Uh, we need to check the Java has been uh, uh, Java has been installed in our device or not. Ah, yes. Well, we have to find uh, in, uh, through open data uh, command. And uh, uh, there are two ways that uh, like directly you can in a search, uh, search box. Uh, type in CMP, then after uh, that other ways or because uh, pressing plus R. So the command uh, pop up message pop up screen will come there where you can able to uh, finding Java iPhone version. What is the version where which is available or not? Yes. So if it is not installed, we have to uh, download the free Java downloading from the Google dot uh, so We got the Java. Uh, we, excuse me. We got the Java. I'm asking right now for the JDK. How to install and download the JDK? <laughs> JDK we can find uh, it uh, in uh, Google. Just a second, just a second. Yeah, JDK free download in that file. Uh, so, uh, Lakshmi, uh, uh, hello, 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 hello. Lakshmi, uh, just be a little bit slow so that it can be easy for everyone to understand. Little bit slow. Okay. Okay. Uh, just so tell me. JDK file down. Hmm. Ah, tell me. For JDK download. Yes. 
you have to find in google <coughs> google.co.in where we can able to find jdk jdk free download free jdk download correct then then we have to uh, select the url link then it will go to the next page yes where we can uh, download the click on the jdk uh, that yes. that section yes yes, yes. Yes. JDK image click on license it. agreement. Super awesome. Yes. And that's a license agreement. Then we can find which device we have and what is our configuration of the device. Yeah. Uh, we can download it either Windows or Mac OS or Linux. Which OS? So if I want to know what is my if I want to know what is my we have to find out it. And if we, if, we, if you are opening in computer right click, yeah, properties will be there in computer. So where you go to finding the device, uh, what it is uh, configured already. Correct. My computer properties there. Yeah, right. You so can where see we the can able to check it out here. System type, what it is, the operating system installed been already. Yes, correct. So sixty five. Uh, that is a uh, Windows. Uh, Windows yes. 7 Ultimate uh, 64 bit. Yes. So we can go and uh, get the file and go. I can go with the Windows 6, 64. This exe file I can download. Yeah. So I can download. Yes. Then after that I can double click on it. Next, yeah, next, yeah. next. Yeah, next to work. Yes. Yeah, download the file. Then yeah. after that, uh, it, uh, it will asking you the installation. Ah, you download it, then after double click on... Uh, yeah, double click on the red color icon. Yes, correct. Uh, can I speak? So, once I download, yes. uh, I need to double click on the exe file, click on next, next, next. Then after that, the JDK will be installed for me. Okay, so then again, close my command prompt. Yeah, then after yes. that, open, the, open the new command. Yes. New box, new command box. Uh, finding the version Java version. Correct. Same, uh, and my wife after, version. after that, one more thing what I need to do. Uh, this thing is I am not getting proper. Okay, so once the JDK has been installed, so I'll mute you right now. category I am not. Ah, no problem, no problem. I'll just inform you. Uh, does anyone want to try? Anyone like to try? As what I did for the path category, that is this advanced system settings. I went to the advanced tab. Anyone like to try? Yeah, yeah sure. You like to try? Uh, yeah, you have to uh, uh, write an environment variable. Ah, so uh, how I can go to the environment variables? I forgot this step. But... Ah, cool, no worries. Go to the my computer, right click properties. Okay. Then after that, click on the advanced, advanced system settings. Yes, then environment variable. Correct. Then go to the advanced tab and run your variables. Yes, super. Mm -hmm. Then then here you have to go for the path under the system variables. Click on edit. Then so then go to the end of the line, give a semicolon. Then paste the path of it. Okay, so I have to give the JDK bin folder section. Okay, so we have got the path information over there. Then you have to click on OK, OK, and OK. So I already given that information jdk information so that's i'm clicking on cancel otherwise click on ok and ok and ok then again close it 
command prompt then again open the command prompt java space hyphen version that's it clear now we have installed the java and then the jdk okay so now next i have to install the eclipse to install the eclipse so again i'm going to forward you one document so anyone has any questions on understanding the java and then jdk download any questions guys for anyone uh, murli i have one doubt yeah yeah yes we are there yeah so for path variable uh, we have only changed the system uh, system variables path right uh, for the path variables i have changed the system so advanced system settings in roman variables yes correct we are not um, we are not changing user variable ah uh, no 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 it's not user variable it's like system variables here at the bottom there we have the path okay so why means from my side when i'm running the java related to the third party components that time i should know which information i'm running okay so those times we need the path and reference to be set clear uh, so, sorry uh, for user variable do we need to select anything or directly no. user variable we are not going to do anything only system variables we are going to go to the path and then we are going to add the we are not going to delete anything we are going to add the extra one more element permissions sure i got it got it thanks okay na yeah then after that you have to click on the okay and okay so the jdk path is what we are given over here in this space okay so now next now we'll see for the eclipse installation so if you want to uh, work on with eclipse i don't need to install the eclipse over there it's here it's so easy so i just go for that i'll just give eclipse download so here i'll just give a version kepler kepler is one type of the version eclipse kepler download it just give some version over there kepler is one version then after that click on the first one you will directly goes to the place where the package system is present hello yes murli i got disconnected in between so i was done till the uh, section where you hello hey sorry sorry divya sorry sorry tell me yeah i'm saying i my net got disconnected so i had uh, uh, i mean missed the eclipse uh, thing that you started just now nothing nothing okay. so your site when you want the eclipse just browse and give eclipse a version name that is kepler just give eclipse kepler download then go to the first url that's what okay there click on eclipse ide for java we developers this is what we are going to get it so here you can see all the different types of actually what releases we have for the eclipse in that right now which one you want take it from kepler luna mars oxygen like that don't go for the late old versions try to go for the latest versions over there so right now kepler packages is there okay so that is what selected there i need the eclipse id for java we developers okay any version we go we need this eclipse id for we java we developers then after that here i will be choosing whether it's a windows machine or mac or a linux 32 bit or 64 bit okay so we got that information so minus 64 bit so that's why i'll go for the 64 bit so now once you download it you can see a rar file like this it will be 
coming. Okay, this is what the file. So right click on the RAR file or the zip file, you can see extract here. Okay, so we got the file. So now go inside the file, then you can see an icon here called Eclipse and application icon. Okay, this is what your Eclipse. So in Eclipse alone, we don't need installation directly download and then utilize it. No need to set the properties or nothing over there. Everything has been done in the backend by default. Now I'll open that. Once I open the Eclipse, first it will be asking me the what space. That is where I need to save my code files over there. Okay, where I need to save the code. File. So usually it'll be in C drive, I'll just change it to some other drive. So I'll just give an D Murli laptop. So then after that Eclipse, Eclipse project. Just go to some website. Learning. So I'll just go to the place, the only laptop. Just again, I'm just searching for which place. I, okay, learning. I'll just keep. Okay, so I'll just browse, go to my D drive, then after that go to my Murli laptop, then after that go to the learning, then click on finish. Okay. Then after that, I'll go to that place. Now when I click on okay, now you can see some temporary files will be loaded here. Okay, always the works first will load with some temporary files. Then after that, our code files, everything also will come. It usually for the first instance, it takes a little bit time, one or two minutes. Then after that, it will be faster. So then now. This is what my welcome screen. If I don't want, I can close that. So I have opened it. So right now it's there in Java WE. I am going to work on with core Java. So if I want to work on with core Java, what I need means. So so here right now we got this is the pane where all our test cases will be loaded or the defects will be loaded. So now I'm going to create a, so first actually how this works means, so first we have workspace, then we have project, then we have package, Then after that we have the class files or the Java files. Class files are the Java files over there. This one. So first from my side I have created the workspace. Now I want to create the project. So if I want to create the project, go to file, new. Here you select project. Then after that here you select Java project or the Java folder, there you choose Java project. Then you click on finish, next, sorry, then you click on next. Then after the year, give the project name. So here if you see right now we have remote temporary files and then dot number, both are temporary files. Then after that I'm going to select here.
Okay, so I choose make sure you choose Java SE 1.7 or 1.8. Don't choose less than the version. Make sure 1.7 or 1.8 should be. That's what you're going to choose here. And then my project name, I'll give first project. Okay, so I'm going to create the project. Sorry. I click on finish. So now if I come here, you can see a folder called first project has been created. So that means what I'm trying to say here means everything happens in the backend copy only. Those are all your UI representation over there. So I go to the first project. There if you see, there is a source folder in the bin folder. The relationship between source and bin folder, once again tomorrow I'll tell you. So here you can click on yes. Okay, so now that a screen change will happen. So these are all unwanted windows which I might not be using. Task yes. All the unwanted windows right now will delete it. Okay, so now right click on the source folder. So we are done with the workspace and then the project. Now package and then the class files. So I'll create a package. So right click on the source folder, go to new and package. Then view package name as first pack. So when I gave the name for the package, it's giving me discouraged package name. So what was the problem? It's giving me discouraged package name. Okay, always the package name should start with a lowercase letter. That's a standard format. But it's not mandatory. That's the proper one actually. But always you are saying it should be starting with a small letter package name. Then click on finish. Then our package has been created. Then right click, click on the class. So Java classes. I'll just give. So to give you like this, so right now I'm going to create a class. So I'll select this default. Then I'll click on the main function, public static void main. Click on finish. Okay. So we have got created the workspace project package and then the Java files. Okay. So these all is what we have got it. Okay, so we have created the class files. So the class files actually what will be saved with the extension called .java. Okay, so I'll go to the source folder. Okay, if I go to the source folder here. So we have this part alone. So we have created the workspace, then after that the project, then after that the package, then after that we have created the Java file over here. So in the source folder, if you see, for us always the Java file will be stored here. Same thing, I can right click and then I click on edit. I can see the code files here. Same thing we have bin folder. Bin folder also will have the same location. But the bin for actually here it is used. This class files can be read only by the JVM. It is used only for execution alone. Okay. You cannot open and then work on that. Okay. So it's like class files or what is from our side is used for one thing, execution point alone. Java files are used for to write the files over there. Okay, Java files are used for to write the programs here. Clear for everyone? Uh, anyone has any questions, guys, so far?
a zip file will come for me right click right click on the zip file extract here you will get a folder like this go to the folder here you can see eclipse and application double click on this one when you double click you will be getting a workspace launcher here it will be asking me where i need to save the code files so i'll just browse and take it mostly laptop and then my version of it so right now i'll just give ruby scripts for example or i'll create a new folder new workspace launch i'll just give simply enter click on okay okay so if we go to the d drive only laptop ruby scripts then here i have new workspace launch this is a place then if i click on okay then some temporary files will be created for me here then you will get the welcome screen i'll close this so by default it will be having the java double e section now i first i'll be okay so from my side i have created the workspace i'm going to create the project to create the project go to file new project okay go to file new and then project here select java project or from the java folder select the java project click on next then after the year you select the environment as 1.7 or 1.8 i'll select 1.7 then after that i'll give my project name project a i'll just give simply then select the environment then when you click on finish see here it's java double e that will be changed to java then it will be asking me this will be uh, this is related to java respective do you like to override that yes then it will get me java section then i will close the unwanted windows which is not needed for me there so my side next the project also has been created now next is package so the project is a here i will have a source and then bin folder so source folder is empty and then the bin folder also it's empty right now so now under the source folder i will create a package right click on the source folder go to new then after that i'll give the package so i'll just give my first pack my first pack then i'll click on finish always package name should start with a small letter if i'm going to start with a big letter it will be giving throwing me a warning it's not an error it throws me a warning there okay then after that right click on the my first pack go to new then after that create a class learning java then this also class name should start with always with a capital letter if you are starting with a small letter it gives you discouraged name okay usually starts with the upper case letter so i'll start the class name with upper case letter then after the select default and then click on main function then click on finish okay select default and click on the public static void min check box click on finish so we have got it so this is what my so now if i come to the original folder section source folder is the bin folder same thing what are the things we have under the source folder we will have it over there under the bin folder source folder it will have it as a java file where i can see the code files here same thing if i come to the bin folder you cannot open this file it 
windows can't open the file clear so java files are used to write the code files write the code class files are used for execution that's it okay so anyone has any questions so far on this i just want everyone to type in the chat window as yes if you have understood it can everyone just type in the chat windows yes if you have understood it guys okay i want the response from each and every one so that it will be easy for everyone has understood that's the thing okay cool good guys super uh sure cool so i'll stop with this one for today okay so from your side what is the assignment uh, uh, what is the assignment for today means you guys have to download the java jdk and eclipse so for all the downloads if you see i have the software here okay everything is there with screenshots what you need to do as what are things we have done and also i'll be sending the recording to you okay so just create it okay also after creating the uh, installing the eclipse just create a class okay that's what you have to do uh virendra you have a doubt on jre uh just again i'll unmute you yes virendra yeah so what is the purpose of having jre uh java jre is what means is a java runtime environment okay so it's like actually from my side uh, to simple to say in easier way uh, so java it needs to run the scripts okay so any software when it needs to work it needs its own environment like that java when it need to perform its action okay not to write run the scripts over there when it needs to perform its actions it needs an environment that environment is actually what java runtime environment if you see i'll come to the c drive so if i see here program files okay so winrar so winrar is what means that's a zip file so if i want the zip file information this is the environment for them to work on it the same thing if you come to the sky ski sky sky will have its own environment okay like that each and every application will have their own environment for us to work on the their specific functionalities clear got it with that yeah okay so any questions guys for anyone any questions uh so this ka each and every day session i will be recording and then i'll be sending to you on the youtube so it's like i will be having the access to record and then i'll be sending to you guys every day okay i i will be sharing the file session every day i will be sharing the documents like this so you will be receiving a mail like this as for that day as what are the code files and then assignments and then the youtube ur information and then after that the files which which are the topics we have covered for that day those things you can see there okay guys oh uh, murli i have a question yes please tell me uh like uh, when we were de defining the environment variable so uh, there is a java home variable also which is different so what is the difference between the uh, java home and the path variable that we provided is there some uh, particular difference uh java variable something okay uh, path path find, yeah we decided or find an environment variable a system variable we updated the java path in the system variable right so we can yes. uh, i have several times created user variable also for java who understood who so is there any significance of that uh, that uh, there is actually what 
this java poem from your side actually what we are going to work on the advanced level of java something that time you will be using it okay so right now for us here the path there if you get the jdk right now that is needed for us when i come to selenium actually what from my side i might need when i'm going to uh, segregate with some software that time i also i might need the java home but right now path is enough for you okay it depends so on it depends? So it depends on the integrated softwares for example auto it is one tool so right now if i want to work on with window based application in selenium mm -hmm. i cannot directly support it with the help of the java so auto it is one tool that is the tool which will help us to work on with the window based application so we used to take the control of auto it so that means i need to uh, pass some request to it and then receive some response to it according to the don't it will work okay so there java underscore home so it's like actually what it needs to know the information where my jdk is present okay when i'm going to work on with some software that time it's needed normally it not be needed that time we will specify the java underscore home okay okay we itself actually what we will be getting an error over there when i'm running the software so the specification is not done please specify the specific information needed then we will just do the changes and that we will work on it okay okay uh each and every day session will be recorded and will be sent to you in max of half an hour to one hour guys okay yeah thank you sure i'll give for the google drive access also so then skip okay yeah thank you thanks guys tomorrow we'll meet by the same time thank you bye 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 guys